Hi, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Candles by Sincerely Ice Blue. If you're new here on this channel, we talk all about making candles, selling candles, and all of the bits and pieces and everything that come in between so that you can start a successful candle company. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, become part of the channel, would love to see you again, and click on that little bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. And this week, what I want to talk to you about, or today, what I want to talk to you about is the feedback from my vendor event and the candles and wax melts that I sold to neighbors and family. We're going to start with the wax melts. And I am ecstatic about how wonderful the wax melts have come out. And my husband and I just kind of started it on a whim and tried it. And we love making them. They're super easy to make. And I think I love making them because I don't have to battle with wicks, which have become my arch nemesis. I've decided that wicks just don't like me. I don't like them. And right now we're not friends. So the wax melts themselves are very easy to make and I've had fun making them and I've had even more fun with the feedback. All of the feedback I have received on my wax melts has been 100% wonderful. That the uh, scents are very aromatic, that they can light them and it smells their whole first floor. It smells up their bedroom. They can smell it wherever. The scents are delightful. Everything that everybody has asked for scent-wise, when I've recommended them a scent, they've really enjoyed what we've supplied to them or what they picked and took home with them. So the wax melts have been fabulous. Now, the candle, on the other hand, has been a little bit of a struggle for me. So when I first started making candles, we gave a batch of candles to one of our dear friends. And I know we did a higher percent and I don't, re I don't recall it off the top of my head, but I wanna say we did like a 12% fragrance load. And for the wax melts, we're using a totally different wax. We have to use a wax that's designed for tarts. But in my candles, I have been battling with the Freedom Wax. And we did a coffee-scented candle and had her test it. And she said it came out beautifully. That scent-wise, they actually burned it outside on their patio and it scented up the whole backyard. But the problem that I was struggling in the beginning was that the wicks were not staying. They kept floating. And by the time the candle got on this size jar to about here, the wick floated and ended up eventually tipping over and drowning and the candle's no good. But they actually loved the scent and said that it was, it filled up the whole room. On those candles, we also used a very generic Amazon cotton wick because I was just getting started and didn't know much about wicks. I just ordered a wick off of Amazon. And they said that the burn was well, except for the fact that it came unglued from the bottom of the candle. So since then, we have continued testing and trying different wicks. And I just did a video about the Freedom Wax and the different wick testing we've done. And we changed how we adhere the wicks now. So I'm using a Gorilla Glue designed for hot temperatures to, I put it on the bottom of the little silver piece, the wick tab holder, and then put that on the bottom instead of using the circles. The circles seemed to come off no matter what we did with them. So even on my tea lights, we're doing that now. And you can kind of see on the bottom there that I don't have a wick tab, we're just using the glue. And what we were finding even with those is because tea lights turn liquidy, fairly quickly compared to a candle, the whole thing is liquid. The wicks were just coming off and we tried different types. I bought some on Amazon. I bought some from a candle supplier and I bought some on Etsy. So I have given up on using the wick stickers and we are sticking entirely to the glue right now. And so far, all of the tests that we've done, 
even burning the candles completely out, including the tea lights, no more floaters. So that's a positive. And you can still reuse and take those wicks off without too much of a battle. It's just about as easy as it was to take them off after the candles burned out as the ones with the little stickers. So don't worry about that if you are selling a vessel where you want to sell it as reusable. They should be able to take that wick out without too much of a problem. So another feedback I got was from a neighbor and she purchased one of our autumn tins. And the one I sold her was a little bit of a lighter fragrance and it's a 6.5 ounce autumn tin. So I'm a little bummed out because um, it's an autumn scent. It does have some eucalyptus and lemon notes to it, but it's a lighter scent. And she said that the burn was beautiful and after two hours, they couldn't smell it. The cold throw is fabulous, just no hot throw. And I was really bummed out. So that's my first experience with what do you do? So I immediately apologized, thanked her for the feedback, and I offered her either her choice of some wax melts to replace it or a replacement candle. And she said she doesn't have a melter for the wax melts and she does have two small children and the Dollar Tree ones that I have have a smaller pool base. So I didn't really necessarily want her to have that one in case they would bump it and spill on themselves. So I offered another candle. She decided to go with that. And I did double check because I had made some with double wicks and some with single. She had the single. So we tried a different pumpkin scent. It's a pumpkin spice scent with two wicks. And we also let her know that because of the diameter on this tin, it is not a big room tin. The autumn tins are more for use in a small room. So like an office, a bathroom, a bedroom, and it's a common tin from Amazon. And many of us are using these. And you can see it does have a wide opening, but it's shallow and even when we've done our testing and the scent came out very strong, we always had it in a smaller room. My office, the guest bathroom, the master bathroom, my husband's office, and it fills up the whole room to the point of you can smell it in the hallway. But if I light it and put it in our kitchen area, which is kitchen attached eating area that flows into a living room, it's all very open, and I know their floor plan is the same, you don't get a whole lot of that scent unless you're right up close. So we did mention that as well. And she's also a business owner. She's actually the lady who makes the Mexican food that I talked about in my last video. And so I'm gonna wait and see how this feedback comes back from her. She actually thanked me for um, accepting constructive criticism and feedback and that was nice to hear she said from one professional business owner to another she truly appreciated that and that she feels the same way i do she just wants to make it right and she wants to hear that feedback and um she had said originally she wanted to say something and her husband told her not to he's like just leave it alone don't say anything and she says, I promise I won't tell anybody else that, you know, we had this conversation. And I told her I appreciate that. And so I'm interested to see how the feedback comes back. The but it's a learning lesson and it does make you feel bad because the first thing I thought of was, oh no, because I sent her a message and said, hey, how did that candle work out? And I got, well, and your heart just sinks. And then you think, oh no. And in my brain, I'm like, it has to be that the scent was weak or that please, I hope that wick did not come off. <laughs> and um, it was a bummer. And it's my first experience with that being a bummer. And I don't like it. But realistically, we're all going to get bad feedback at some point. Because even if you make the most beautiful candles, 
somebody may not like something about it and they could be burning it in the wrong size room. They may not be burning it for the right amount of time so it tunnels. Their candle care is just not the way it should be or it's a lighter scent and maybe you smell it but they don't. Maybe they bought a eucalyptus candle from you and they burn eucalyptus all the time so for them it's too light of a scent. But because you don't burn eucalyptus all the time, for you, it's a stronger scent. There's so many variables. So don't take it personally when somebody gives you that feedback, if the feedback is done in a constructive manner. Now, if somebody's coming at you and they're personally or verbally attacking, it's a whole different story. But my neighbor came back to me very constructively and was very happy that I offered her another candle. So just a little bit of a lesson on feedback. So that's what I have for you today is that my wax melts are doing wonderfully and I'm still struggling with these candles. And I'm starting to wonder if the Freedom Wax, I'm gonna have to do maybe some mixing with some beeswax or some coconut or try a different brand of the Freedom Wax. Maybe the straight soy is not gonna be the right choice for me. On these autumn tins, we did do only an 8% fragrance load because in our home it worked well. I might have to bump that up. I don't know. Um, I'll let you know when I figure it out. We did recently buy a coconut soy blend from a different manufacturer that I have curing on the shelf and I should be burning it this weekend. I have let it sit almost an entire month and it's making me crazy because I want to burn it, but I want to give it enough cure time. So I will get back to you on that as well. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in and hearing about my feedback. Even though it's not 100% positive, it's still positive because anything that we can learn and grow from is good. So live your life out loud. Oh, don't forget to click on my subscribe button. Come back again and see me, but live your life out loud. And this week, what I want you to do is if you're not happy with something, give somebody constructive criticism. Or if somebody gives you constructive criticism, let us know how you dealt with it. So what I want you to do is if something upsets you this week, take a step back and see if you can constructively provide feedback to somebody, even me, if my videos are bumming you out, <laughs> I will take it. Um, but I want you to do, come out of your comfort zone a little bit and let's talk about that feedback and how we give it and how we, how we receive it. So have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.